Hello everyone, I'm Ovi. I'm from Universitas Pamulang. In this occasion, I'm gonna present a video about the unique topic from me, and this is uh, my midterm test assignment from my lecturer, Mr. Tito, as sociolinguistic subject. Well, the reason why I chose this topic, as I mentioned before, um, this topic is uh, unique to know, and uh, this is my first time I get this material in my seventh semester about sociolinguistic subject and here is my mind mapping about the topic and from this i'm gonna explain what inside yep for today i'm gonna explain about the lingua franca pidgin and creole what are they let's check it out well as you see here this is my mind mapping and meeting three about lingua franca pidgin and creole what are they? Let's explain one by one. Lingua Franca. Now, the first is Lingua Franca. A Lingua Franca is a language used by different population to communicate when they do not share a common language because the Lingua Franca was commonly understood by many people speaking different language. And the term lingua franca was first used during the middle age and described a language created as a combination of french and italian today lingua franca plays an important role in global communication as well um, the united nations defines its official languages as arabic chinese english french russian and spanish all right, these are the example of lingua franca. The first is Swahili. Um, in many African nations like Tanzania and Zaire. 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 Forget it. Number two. Russian in the former USSR. Three. English in several tourist destination and in the scientific community and for the last the fourth talk pissing talk pissing talk pissing <laughs> four talk pissing talk pissing in Papua New Guinea Well all right goes to pigeon well, for the next, the second, Pidgin language, Pidgin, no, Pidgin, Pidgin is Buwong. Pidgin is a language with no native speaker. It is no one's first language, but it's a contact language. Many pigeons develop when an individual travels in a foreign country where he or she cannot speak the language. So, uh, the speaker will reduce the vocabulary and the syntactic structure of communication. For instance, when you are going to England and you don't have enough ability to speak English, you will use the simply syntactic structure and vocabulary, such as uh, I rise the taxi and I done it. Well, for the development of pigeon, as they develop, they can replace the existing mix of languages to become the native language of the current communication. This stage requires the pigeon to be learned natively by children who then generalize the feathers of the pigeon into a fully formed, stabilized grammar. Yep, next, for the last is Creole. Well, for the last, the third is Creole language. Ding. Creole is a stable natural language developed from the mixing of parents' languages. Or we can conclude that uh, a Creole language is a pidgin language, which is accepted as the original language that already has native speakers and it is it can be said it is the mother tongue or first language to a group yep for the development of creole 
In linguistic, Creole is speech in which from time to time and from one generation to the next generation that continues to develop into a variety of languages. So for the reason the development of Creole uh, may arise in one of two basic situations. They are one is where the speaker of Pidgin are put in a situation in which they cannot use their respective mother tongue. And for the second situation is uh, where a pigeon is regarded by a social group as a higher languages variety and deliberately cultivated. All right, for the process of development from pigeon to Creole, Creole language developed from pigeon language. First of all, a language is used as a first language in an area. Then the youth, especially the merchants, activities interaction by trade from various origins traders, when they interact with other countries, they are much different languages, have either structural or functional. So, they create a new language with codes, and to paraphrase of their own languages, understood by all traders. Well, for the conclusion is, a lingua franca is defined by function. Its function is communication among people who do not speak the same language from birth. Creole and pigeon and the other hand are defined by their origin and by the population that use them. They are not defined by their function. A pigeon is a specially made up simplified language, often with elements from two or more languages to allow communication between people of different la different native language. A pigeon might be used lingua franca, but lingua franca needn't be a pigeon. Well, I think that's enough for me to explain a little bit about lingua franca, pigeon, and creole. I hope uh, after you watch this video, uh, you can understand a little bit about the definition of lingua franca, pigeon, and creole. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I'm Ovi. Have a nice day. See you and bye-bye.